Thank you, Brother Robert, and the focus in the prayer, and David, and uh, our focus in singing, taking time to be holy. And I'm thankful that you've taken time to be here tonight, uh, especially for this uh, focus that we're going to have for the devotional portion, and then our class by Brother Tim Shoemaker. Uh, this morning, you know, we focused on the fact that it's September 11th, and it still is. I mentioned a story surrounding uh, what happened the following day, 21 years ago, how Queen Elizabeth broke a 600-year tradition, and she had the Star Spangled Banner played uh, as a, a, show, a showing of hope, a showing of solidarity with our country. It was a beautiful act of love that she did. But what I found interesting about that, I believe that it really embodies passage that we read in Romans 12 and verse 18. It says, If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So far as it depends on you. Think about your life. Think about what you can do to live peaceably with all people. You know, none of us have the platform of being a queen <laughs> and having that kind of power, even though the power that she wielded was really over the shadow, uh, I believe, of 32 different nations. Really, it's the shadow. It's no longer the land. But still a representation of, what, a third of our world? It's a lot of power, a lot of influence, I should say. And she was willing, as one person, to show an act of peace in response to an act of war, an act of terror. So we could look at this and say, well, I, I can't show that kind of, uh, of, of response. I can't be like that. As far as it depends on me, well, who, who am I? I remember in class, I had a teacher. She asked us to, to write down on the test something that we could do to help with, you know, with pollution. Can I do? I don't make any policies. I saw, I, you know, but I've got to get a good grade. And I said, turn the light switch off when I leave the room. That's what I said. That's what I came up with. She said, yes, I got a great grade on that. I got the answer right. But I literally thought, it's like, what is that in comparison? You know, at the end of the day, it's what I can do. It's what you can do. This is what this passage is saying. Whether you have the platform of of of, of strength like a queen, or whether you're a child of the king. The thing is, as a child of God, we have an opportunity, we have a responsibility to live peaceably, to represent peace to all people. And that's a platform that God has given you. It's a platform that God has given me. Every one of us collectively makes a difference when we do so individually for the cause of Christ. In fact, that's what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. It's not the keepers of peace. It's makers of peace. How can you be a peacemaker? By being peaceful in the realm that you have, in the platform that you have, whether it's social media, whether it's having a conversation with someone at the supermarket. It's a platform of being peaceful in any situation. We are children of God. In fact, that's the NIV brings out that the peacemakers shall be sons of God. It's really children of God. So why sons or why children of God? Because the offspring of God looks so much like God. You know, you, you ever look at a child and you say, yep, I see your mama. Yep, I see your daddy. We, literally, when we are peacemakers, it makes us look like God. It makes us look like God. And that's something people need to understand. But, you know, the God of the Bible sometimes is accused of being a God of war. Paul, you brought that out very well in our class this morning. I'm telling you, I have loved the Revelation class. It's been a blessing for us. But people misunderstand the God of the Old Testament, nothing can be further from comparing God to a God of war. Nothing can be further from the truth because God is the author of peace. 
God is the author of peace. Jesus used his platform of divine power and brought about peace. John 14 and verse 27. If you'll turn there with me in the few moments we have remaining. Jesus has just said, I'm leaving. Man, their hearts are troubled at this thought. They're not at peace in this idea that Jesus is leaving. When he says, let not your heart be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many rooms. If you want to sow, what I've told you, I go to prepare a place for you. When I go, I'm going to return. I'm going to receive you to myself. Notice verse 27. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Remember in Greek there is no exclamation point. When something is repeated, like when Paul says rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice, or when Jesus says truly, truly, or verily, verily, when amen, amen is repeated, it's an exclamation point. Point. When rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. It's an exclamation point. And he's saying, let not your heart be troubled in the second time. That's an exclamation point. Because he's leaving peace with us. But the way the world views peace, I heard this said recently and it was profound to me. The way the world sees peace is really the absence of war. So the worldly understanding of peace is we're fine with nothing. We're fine with nothingness. But what Jesus leaves with us is substance. He's literally giving us peace. And it, it, there is, it's something tangible that he's left with us. It's not emptiness. He's offering us the substance, a life of peace. Not the absence, and, and it's not in the absence of war, but in the midst of it. Peace even when turmoil takes place. Especially when turmoil takes place. John 16.33 says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. Have, possess, own peace. That's not emptiness. That's not nothingness. And then he says this, when are you going to have this peace? In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I've overcome the world. Isn't that powerful? In the world, in the midst of a world of tribulation, a world of hurt, we can be at peace. And the way we are is when we are peacemakers representing God as His children. When people can see that we're at peace and the world is experiencing war, experiencing hardship, pain, even though we're going to experience pain, we're going to experience challenges. But if we can have the response of Job, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away, blessed be the name of the Lord. If we can respond in that way, people will want to know why they're in Christ. There is something about that person. That person's in Christ. Only in Christ will we be able to overcome the world. Notice he says that. Take heart. I have, take heart, I have overcome the world. So in Christ, we too will overcome the world. And we will not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The world will be overcome by the peace that passes all understanding. For in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God. Galatians 3, 26. If you looked at verse 27, how are we to be in Christ Jesus? For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. This world needs people to put on Christ. But often it's seen, this, this, this idea of a personal decision to, to be saved. But the world needs to see those who have put on Christ so that they can know how to be in Christ and not be stuck in this rut of a world. To not be stuck in the tribulation that only comes from the world, but for them too to be able to overcome the world through Jesus. So my question for you is simple tonight. Are you in Christ? Have you put 
on Christ in baptism. We have an invitation that is offered that is simply a moment in time. A moment in time that is here. It is now for us to be in Christ. To not have to deal and, and, and settle with the tribulation the world is offering. The war that is here. We can have peace. And it will go beyond all comprehension. But it is only in Christ. You put him on in baptism tonight. Maybe you have but you've allowed the cares of the world to distract you, cause you to take your mind off of God, off of the path, off of the plan. Break tradition that's earthly and be willing to accept the forgiveness that God offers you. If you are subject to this invitation, please respond now. While together we stand and as we sing.